every year, 800,000 people are committing suicide. This is many times more than the number of people murdered and those who die in wars, many times more. I think I can call it a phenomena when 800,000 people are dying per year, which means every 40 seconds, approximately every 40 seconds, one person is committing suicide. That's not a small thing. Well, there are many aspects to this. If you... <laughs> if you are... Because people right now, if they've lost somebody who is dear to them or who they look up to, now they are in emotional state, they will not look at it as it should be. But if you are willing to simply look at it as life, not as a person, One of the most fundamental reasons for collapse of an individual human being, which may end in suicide or may end in a depressed state or may end in some other kind of ailment, uh, that is subject to various aspects. But essentially a collapse. Life did not collapse. Life collapse, that's different. That is Kala Bhairava's work. You want to take his job, you want to go ahead of him and do it yourself. Well, this needs to be treated with compassion, I know that very well. It's not that I'm... I have no compassion, it is a sensitive matter. But I want you to look at it simply the way it is, because if you want to grasp what it is, otherwise when somebody commits suicide or when somebody dies, you get emotional, you think this is the end of the world, after three days you will go back to your normal life and everything will go on and you'll forget about it. And once again when somebody dies, again the same emotions, same struggles and again go back to the same square one. So it's time that you look at it just as life not as a person, especially not as a person that was near to you or dear to you or someone that you loved. Don't look at it that way, just as life. Why does a life do this? <clears throat> there are many, many layers to this. One fundamental aspect is the experience of life is not pleasant. Because right now, the experience of our life has been mortgaged to something else, to success in the world or to money, to wealth, to relationships, just so many things, mortgaged to so many things. If the market collapse, people will commit suicide. If a love affair collapses, somebody will commit suicide. If they lose their wealth, they will commit suicide. Because what you call as a human being, unfortunately, is a collage of all these things. My money, my home, my family, my relationships, my job, and my position, my fame, my name, all this collage. Well, this means a collage means a loosely put together pieces. Any time it can collapse. If one part of the picture somebody burns it out, it'll collapse. Well, many questions will come up, I know in a brief time, I won't be able to cover all these aspects. There's, I think, uh, we have covered this in the death book. To an extent of elaborateness, where I will not make enemies with people. Yes, because most of the humanity is not willing to look at life straight in the eye. They want drama. So to the point that it is possible to present in the public space, 
we've gone that place and a little more with that book about suicide and all these aspects. To put it very simply, there is life. Life means not things that happen in your life. Life is not a drama that's happening around you. Life is a fundamental thing that's happening within you. This life runs on the basis of certain principles and laws of its own. And now, there is a world around you, a society. It learns... it runs on its own crazy principles, which is fluid and changing all the time. Today, if you do one thing, people will clap their hands for the same thing. Hundred years later, they will pull you down. Well, right now, there is a movement going on. All these races, at one time, they were celebrated, they were great leaders. They were great leaders, people thought, it's not one or two people, I want you to understand. Today, it is being made out like this, one person was a racist. One person was not a racist, the entire society was. One person killed more, captured more, enslaved more, so he was a hero, that's why we put up his statue. In the given society, he was a great hero. Because a racist means he is against somebody but serves somebody else. If I rob you and give it to this person, this person is happy, he thinks I'm a wonderful guy, called a Robin Hood, you know. So, when people went and stole wealth from other nations, people at home clapped their hands and said, this is wonderful. That was not enough, stealing their wealth. We stole people and brought them. People said, this is great, these guys will work for free. People said, it's great, please understand, it's not that one guy, not that one slave trader. It is the entire society which enjoyed the fruits of slavery, no question about it. We can't escape that. So similarly, in a society, in any given society, this is not a commentary about any particular person or a particular society. In every society, there is something like this. Some are absolutely unbearable levels, others are manageable levels, but in every society, there is something like this. This happened to me very young. When I was ten, eleven maybe, by the age of eleven, eleven and a half, well, uh, I start looking at life in terms of what is justice, what is injustice. I found my father very unjust. I found my mother very unjust. I found my sisters and my brother very unjust. I found the political system very unjust. I found the social situation very unjust. I saw the global situation very unjust. Everything looked like injustice to me. As I saw injustice in everything, I got slowly angry, 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 angry. No wonder, it today happens to be uh, Che's birthday. Oh, I got there without even knowing about it. So, Che Guevara became a big inspiration. I want to join armed struggle because all the unjust people I want to kill. All those people who are spreading injustice in the world, you want to kill. This is what Subramanya or Kartikeya did. He went on slaughtering thousands of people, wherever he saw injustice, slaughter, slaughter, slaughter. Then he realized, if you go by this mode, you will have to slaughter the entire world. Because in everything, there is some injustice. I... <laughs> Even within the ashram, a lot of people complaining, how much injustice is there in this damn place? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I get all kinds of commentaries <laughs> How I am unjust? <laughs> because there is no such thing as perfect justice which will make everybody happy. It's simply not possible. Whichever way you do, within the family if there are two children, one child will feel there's injustice for him because 
when you cut the mango, one piece was bigger than the other. <laughs> yes, it's like this. So when you are a collage, some piece falls down and sometimes without that piece you will be little, uh, what to say, crying and singing. Because all these things have been romanticized, when somebody cries and sings in great misery, it is considered a great song and a fantastic place. Hello? You enjoy other people crying, isn't it? You enjoy other people being in misery, you go to the cinema and uh, they cried and they... their life was a disaster, you also cried, then you came out and said, what a great movie. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> I'm not commenting about the art form, but I'm saying, you enjoy other people's misery as long as it doesn't touch you. If the same things happen to you, you cry, but now tears really have bitterness. Hmm? Now tears have acid, it burns into you. Otherwise, it's all a kind of nice thing. So why I'm saying this to you is, Sadhguru, when somebody, a young man has committed suicide, do you have to be so brutal? I... that's why I told you, I'm not talking about this person or any one person. Look at life as it is. Life is happening to a certain principle and a certain law of its own. Now you have created a society which is a collage of many things, nobody knows what the hell it is about. Now you take this entire society and imprint it on your mind, so you have a mind which is just like the society. But not even exact reflection of the society, your own distortions of the society. See, you can't live without the society. But in the society, there are so many points of misery for you. When it works against you, you are miserable. When it works for you, you enjoy it. <laughs> this is going on. So you have a mind, thought and emotional structure and you have a life. These are like, uh, you know, in Isha Yoga Center, all the carts we put only one bull. This is very new in Tamil Nadu if you don't know this. Only in Karnataka there are one bull uh, carts. In Tamil Nadu, there are no one bull carts, always two bulls. Even a small cart, two bulls. There's some cultural uh, belief or understanding about that. So I insisted it must be one bull. Our people said, no Sadhguru, one bull will not be able to pull. I said, it's okay, put ball bearings, do whatever you have to do, make it easy, but it must be one bull. Now, the life that you are and the mind that you are are like two bulls on a cart. You must be a skillful driver to keep the two bulls in one direction. If one goes this way, one goes that way, your cart will crash. It may not go totally away, they're little pulling this way, then you're little depressed, you're struggling, you're miserable. But if it really goes in two different directions, you will crash. Not everybody will crash. Unfortunately, eight hundred thousand people per year, I don't know, over... they are saying over two hundred thousand people are between twenty to twenty-nine years of age. Prime of their life, they're taking it out. So what is their struggle? Somebody may have a incurable disease, so very painful, so he wants to end it, we will pardon him. Now somebody else in a financial mess, we don't pardon him. Somebody else failed our affair. We cannot pardon him. Somebody else failed an exam, cannot pardon him at all. Like this, there are many reasons. This is not to make jokes out of them, it is just this, that all that's happening within you is, you have a mental image of what is life and you have a life. When your image doesn't match the life that you are, this life that you are is not different from the life that I am. 
It is not different from the life that anybody is. But your mind has become like this, it doesn't reflect life, it doesn't serve life. It thinks it's a life which by itself. You start believing that your thought process and emotion is a life by itself. Your social situations are a life by itself. Now, one bull is pulling this way, one bull is trying to go straight, another bull is pulling that way. We don't know how strong the ropes are, how long it'll hold. If it doesn't crash, anyway it's a miserable ride. See, there is no need for you to end your life because Kala Bhairava, his efficiency you cannot question. He is not left one single human being undead. Never failed, isn't it? Some people lived long. This doesn't mean they escaped death, they lived well, that's all. Their mind and their life, the two bulls ran together. Or maybe they were wise enough to make it into one bull. Only their life ran, mind was just a small happening, like me. Nothing in the head. So, no problem, people ask, Sadhguru, will you ever get angry, will you get depressed, will you feel frustrated? Where does that happen? Where does those things happen? I don't know where it happens because that place where it happens generally doesn't exist with me. Once in a way, when I sit like this, I need a mind, so I bring it back. Otherwise, it doesn't exist. There is. Well, does frustration happen in my little finger? It is hurting a bit, but frustration doesn't happen in the little finger. But looking at the little finger, frustration can happen here. Frustration cannot happen in the little finger. Frustration cannot happen in your toes. Frustration cannot happen in your knees. Frustration happens only in one place. That place, to get rid of that place, it takes lots of work. So right now the best thing to do is, the two bulls must be disciplined enough to ride together. You don't try to make life go with mind, there's no such thing. It runs by itself, that's not even yours. That's not run by you, it's running, this is creation. Your business is to keep the other bull, which is entirely your bull, You're getting it, huh? <laughs> this is entirely your bull, made up by you. The bull that you have made up should run with this bull. Your bull should just be a shadow of this bull. Your bull, the shadow has stood up and doing its own nonsense. Obviously, there'll be trouble. So this may... a whole lot of reactions will come for this, because this is going live <laughs> But I'm telling you, this is all it is. There is life and it's a fortune that with evolutionary process, we have such a complex mental or cerebral activity. You just did not learn how to ride that bull, that's all. You can call it misery, you can call it frustration, you can call it depression. You know, the depression clubs have been at me for the last two, three years because I said something like this. Once, and a, once again, I'm saying <clears throat> this is not to insult them. This is not because I have no empathy for them. This is because there is a way beyond that. When there is a way beyond that, if you do not explore that, it's most unfortunate. Well, no Sadhguru, isn't it natural for life to be up and down and up and down, you know? 
People immediately weave philosophies around their misery. No, it is natural, last two days I was happy, now last one week I've been miserable, it is natural. After all, we were very happy when we got married, last fifteen years we've been, we've been miserable, it's okay. I'm saying people are weaving philosophies around their misery. There is no need to weave a philosophy around your misery or your joy or your love because these are all things that you generate in your thought and your emotion. There is no need for a philosophy. There is simply no need for any kind of philosophy, explanation or religion or God loves you or you love him, none of these things are needed if, if, if you had your bull in total control. That's all it takes. The, the mental bull is running away. If it was in your control, you would make this bull serve the cause. If you have two bulls on your cart, the purpose of both the bulls must be same. The moment two bulls have different intentions, then... See, I want you to understand this. This life, the life that you are, this is not thinking of becoming rich. This is not thinking of becoming famous. This is not thinking of this and that, acquiring this or that. Well, it needs body to be nourished well, that's all. That's a fundamental need. If the platform of body is well nourished, it'll stay. If it is not, it'll go. But even that, it does not ask. That is something that we decide that this must go on. But the life just wants to happen in an effervescent and exuberant way, as effervescently as possible, as exuberantly as possible. Now, you must see, probably you have not seen, you uh, these days uh, there are not too many because everything has become tractor, truck and all this, otherwise in these mud tracks, there are mud tracks which, uh, you know, which have cut deep into the thing like ten, twenty feet below the normal earth, it's cut and it's all like that. You will see a bullock cart driver, how he will struggle to keep the two bulls together. Because once the land is not flat, the bulls get little confused. One wants to go like this, one wants to go like that. One is walking to its comfort, Another is trying to find its own comfort because the land is like that. And too much load on one bull, so it is trying to push it on the other one. Now he struggles to control. How skillfully he is, will decide. How successfully he will come out of that mess. Well, usually there will be one or two very skillful drivers. When difficult situations come, they will put their cart that side, walk back and put one, one cart, the same driver, because they clearly know all of them are not equally competent to handle the two bulls in difficult terrain. On flat terrain, everybody rides. On flat terrain, even if it's pulling and pushing, you don't notice because it's going straight. So this is the reason why the purpose and the activity aimed towards self-transformation is the most important activity in a human being's life. Why forever in this culture, spiritual process has been held as the most important and the highest dimension in life is simply because one aspect of it is reality, another aspect is psychological reality. Even to make out the distinction between the two, it needs some work. Otherwise, you are thinking the bull that you have made up is a reality by itself. The bull that you make up, especially the bull that you have made up, should be completely in your control, isn't it? Hmm? Creation's bull, not totally in our control, we leave it to Kala Bhairava. But the bull that I made up must be completely in my control. But right now, that is the bull that's going out of control.
So in how many ways it will manifest, how many varieties of sufferings that human beings have today, these are all the different ways it will manifest. The suffering can become to such a point that the fundamental reason why you are here is because you're born and you're alive. So the very fundamental becomes unimportant, that your own shadow bull becomes... a shadow becomes more important than the real thing, that's all that's happened. You can call this misery, you can call this frustration, you can call this depression, you can call this suicide. But essentially the shadow has become more important than the real thing. Well, whoever this young man is, most unfortunate, but over eight hundred thousand people are doing this to themselves every year. We can't be very proud of having created a great society or a civilization. If genuinely we have created a great civilization, then all sorts of people, all sorts, the strong, the weak, the capable, the incapable, everybody should find a place somewhere. Everybody should at least know within their limited space how to remain peaceful and joyful. This is civilization. Right now our idea of civilization for the last millennia has been how to go and hack other people to death, grab their things and say we are civilized. When you have such an idea of civilization, internally, many, many things will go on because you have invested in the collage that you have created. To such an extent, I am not saying we should not have a social structure, we should not... Are at any point of time society will be a perfect collage, no, it will never be. It is just that you can blow your balloon, your bull, you can make it as big as you want, but you must be able to put it to sleep when you don't want. When what you create, you start thinking is the reality, is existential. When you mistake the psychological for existential, unfortunately, suffering is inevitable. This moment, you may be... <laughs> uh, I, I never understood as a child, I always heard this, I'm feeling on top of the world. I would just think, is he on North Pole? As a <laughs> What is this top of the world? What they mean is, if you pile up all the human beings in a heap, they are right on the top, that's what they mean. They don't mean North Pole. It took me some time to understand this. Whenever people said, I'm on top of the world, I thought I would imagine maybe they're dancing on North Pole. <laughs> because right from a very early age, I was a geography buff. So... <laughs> It took me some time, these people are imagining every other human being below them, that's top of the world. When you have such a dream, suffering is inevitable. This is... let this be very clear, that this is not... what I'm saying is not a commentary about any one person. This is the nature of your existence. If you come to terms with it, you will know how to manage this, not just manage this, how to make this into a phenomenal possibility. Or every day struggling with the two bulls, screaming, yelling, you should see the bullock cart drivers, how they abuse the bulls, because they're draw... they're... Dr you know, they're going in different directions, bad words and filth, everything they will abuse the bulls. I'm sure they don't understand the bull that you're throwing out, but uh, that is how bitter you're feeling. Today you're seeing in the society, abuse is not only at a given time, sometime once in a way you lost control and abuse. Daily conversation is abuse. It's becoming like that. This clearly is like a barometer, it is showing 
what is the level of discrepancy you have between life and the shadow. The discrepancy is so much, if you sit, stand, only thing that comes out is filth from your mouth. Only thing is abuse, abuse, abuse. This is happening around the world. Uh, some people may be picking it up thinking it's fashion, but essentially you need to understand there's such a level of unpleasantness within you, nothing wonderful can come out of you, not possible. It is only abuse, so you must understand, once it is moving this way, this eight hundred thousand number may keep on growing. A whole lot of people will start thinking it's not worth living because they have not touched life itself. They're lost in their own bull. Their psychological reality has completely overpowered the life process, the existential process that we call as life. Life is not your doing. You didn't create this. This is a phenomena. If you were part of this phenomena, like the galaxies are, like the wind is, like the water is, without cerebral activity of their own, without individual experience, you would also be fine, floating in the wind. Existence gave you an individual experience, though you're bloody nothing. In this cosmos, you're really nothing. To this nothing, a speck, it gave you an individual experience. You can sit here and experience yourself as a separate entity. In this, there is no word. There is no word for how magnificent and how elaborate a creation it is. In this cosmic space, you are not even a speck of dust, microscopic, not even that. For this kind of a speck, there is an individual experience. And right now, because you have taken this individual experience too seriously and abusing it too much, your miseries, your frustrations, your depressions, unfortunately, suicide is one consequence. But many other people are living far more miserable than the people who actually committed suicide. But they continue to live because uh, one bull is very strong, it's not giving up. Yes? For some reason, life energies are too strong, they won't give up. If these eight hundred people... eight hundred thousand people are people who are successful. For eight hundred thousand people, I'm quite sure there are at least three times or four times or five times, I don't know the exact number, who attempted suicide. Not successful cases are there, any number. So, that is because life was strong and they didn't give up. Though mind wanted to go there, life was strong. Your thought and emotion wants to go there, but life was strong and held on. Well, when life should end, life will decide. But whatever reasons they committed suicide, once a life is gone, either by ailment or accident, natural death, suicide, it doesn't matter how. Once a life is left, we must just bow down because that is the decision of a life for whatever reason. When they're alive, we do everything to see that this must be avoided. Once it has left, you must just bow down because that's existence about which you have no power. You have power to ride it. You have no power to control it. You have no power to direct it. You can only enjoy the ride of life. So once a life has left, whoever it is, for whatever reason, what reasons they committed suicide may look profound or silly to you, it doesn't matter why. But once a life has chosen to leave, you bow down and respect that. Mm -hmm.